Greg Norman, who has a, a real challenge to make his par. Raymond, that shot that Greg Norman hit, you can go back and say, oh, he should have hit a sandwich or he should have pitched it. What you have to do is you go along with the player. He thought that was the best shot, and he's been around, and you got to go along with it. I think under the circumstances, he felt like that was the shot that he could get close. Uh, with a bad lie like he had, the ball down, it's just very erratic when you try to loft it soft, and he didn't have the room to work with. The greens are very firm. You had this putt this morning. What's it still? This putt's a little slower than it looks, and it breaks left a little bit more. Looks like he's giving it a chance. Get in there. I'll tell you, that's the character of the man right there. If you ever needed it, he needed it and he drained it. Right here, he's got no room in which to maneuver the ball between himself and the flag stick, which is only six yards from the back of the green. This is his third shot. Caught up in the fringe a bit, but under the circumstances, not all bad. With his uh, touch with that magic wand, anything's possible. The reshafted putter, and now a putt that Mark Kalkovecchia appreciates is enormously important because the roar for Greg Norman's par putt at the last hole was so loud that uh, he was quite startled and uh, the news has been relayed to him by the spectators that Norman made par for 62 so he knows exactly what the situation is but that's not going to do very much either if anything it will go a touch to the left but uh, I would say he will aim it right of center Fantastic save by Mark Kalkovecchia, who enjoys a one-stroke advantage over Greg Norman and Paul Azinger. And we'll be back with more golf action from the Doral Rider Open after this message and a word from your local station. And by NEC, a world leader in computers and communications. Azinger, Paul Azinger. Birdie for Azinger, now the co-leader with Mark Kalkovecchia at 16 under. Birdie's at 14 and 15 for Azinger. And he has the birdie hole 16 coming up next. On the left, take a driver and blast it. See the way he picked up the tee? Got to be perfect. Perfect it is. And let's go to the 18th tee. And on a tee here. Oh, Cal Kavecchia and Sowers, and look out. That is way right. I mean, that's maybe the first fairway. Right now, let's go down to our colleague Steve Melnick by the 18th green. Pat, thank you very much. Greg Norman, congratulations on a record-setting round. What can we say? Well, what can we say, uh, Steve? It's just something that's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It just it just happened, too. In the middle part of the round, things just seem to get going. You hold a 90-yard uh, shot and, and off and running. And, uh, you know, I played very well today, except uh, 18 here. I sort of tried to botch it up a little bit. But, you know, I knew what the situation was at 18, and I was hitting it right at the flags all day long. So I figured, well, I'd do it at 18. And I just pulled about eight feet, and, you know, it was enough to spin it back down off. And so it was, it was nice to make that part, though, for 62. Why Sunday and not Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I don't know really. A lot of people ask me that question. I don't know whether it's a challenge because it's a Sunday. I don't know whether... I mean, there's a lot of questions to be answered like that, but uh, I just enjoy doing it. I did it in Australia at the Australian Masters. I've done it um, 
you know, pretty consistently, and I enjoy doing it. I guess uh, I like the challenge of trying to come back from as far back as I can get, I guess, but uh, I enjoyed it. Ken Venturi said you ought to get the Sunday paper delivered on Thursday morning. <laughs> That's a good idea, I think. It's just tell everybody it's Sunday. <laughs> well, eight birdies and one eagle, Pat. It's a pretty impressive round. He's got it coming in low. Not quite enough. That buck back bunker might have got him. That tree. Just the bottom limb and didn't get out of the rough. He was trying to cut it out of there to make sure he missed it to the right because he still can play a little bit with maybe bogey, but the ball got in the high rough and he couldn't get it out and it jumped up on him, Rim. Yeah, now he's going to have a pretty tough lie. His ball disappeared there in the deep Bermuda grass. Uh, he does have a good angle to come up the green. Uh, now I think uh, his chore will be to try to make bogey. And as Gary McCord said just a moment ago, he thought uh, that Paul Azinger had pretty good control of things. and would appear that that's very, very true. Out to 16. Azinger has taken a long, long time to look at this. It's 15, and this is to go to minus 17. And, oh, my goodness. Oh, the dreaded cellophane bridge got him. You saw all that rough come That's out right. there. Come down, and you're right. Well, he's got almost the same putt as Norman had, but this is more difficult because it's deeper in the green. And so, as you said, coming down the hill, Azinger's putt will move a little bit left, but he can't, I mean right, but he can't give the hole away. Tim Simpson left. Mark Kalkovecki and his wife and child. On the right of your picture. I saw Mark this morning walking back from breakfast in the pool. I said, when he was carrying his child, I said, that'll, that'll loosen up your shoulders. He says, it's the best, best exercise I know. Well, let me tell you, guys. I know what you're going to say. This is what it's all about. This is what you've practiced and hit balls and countless hours on the putting green at dark, and you've played that little mental game. If I make this, I win. And now... This is the situation. You're talking about one of the gutsiest players right here. It's a little short stroke. No. Oh, he hit it too easy and took the break just like you said. Four players will go to the first tee. It will be Azinger, Norman, Cal Kavecchia, and Simpson at one. He must sign his card first before he thinks about going to the first tee. They'll go to one as you look at their playoff records. They're all negatives. Simpson 0-1, Calcavecchia 0-1, Norman 1-6, and, and Azinger 0-1. They'll go to one. ...around the green there, not quite as easy as they look, but he's, he's a lot closer than... Ball Paul. didn't up well. Here's a guy who shot 62 today. 1-6. In extra innings. He's got a four iron pad from 223. He'll put it up high in the air. You can bet on that. He's staring at it too. Yeah. That didn't miss by much hitting the flag stick. That's unbelievable. That, that's shooting your golf ball right there, buddy. <laughs> That almost went in. That was about two inches from hitting the flag, hitting the pole. You know, the most difficult thing here, both shots, uh, let's, let's go to Steve. What's he playing, Steve? Four Raymond. 220. Get the look on your face. Alcavecchia didn't take the break, moved the left. Well, he's got the cinch four now. I would think Paul would make his as well. 
But you got two boys that are chipping right down the gun sight. One of these, one of these is apt to go in. Now, Norman will be next. I would take the pin out, Raymond. I wouldn't leave this pin in. You have to make it. I think it can hurt you more than help you. I agree. I think, uh, I think there's more room in that hole without it in there. I definitely believe that. If you're thinking of making, take it out. It looks good. Right at it. And there it is. One left, though. Wait a minute. We've got one more. That's only 12 under par for 19 holes. What a remarkable day. It's going to be tough for Tim Simpson. They're still yelling and everything, but Simpson, I guarantee you, he's still got his, he's got his tournament face still on. He is still growling at it. He wants to tie it. Now he's got one thing, Raymond. They don't pay second, third, or fourth. All these players, no matter what score they make, they will finish second, and he will, he has to get this to the hole. He has to make it go. Now, he's taking it out. There's one way thought, one way and the other, but I've seen so many where they've hit the pin and bounced out, but that ball went in just like a short putt. That was a perfect shot. It hit on the green, released straight to the hole, and right, bam, in the middle. You Remind me the one almost, you chipped in at 16. You could almost tell it from the beginning. It looked good, didn't it? You knew you made yours when it was going at that. Now, he's Simpson's putting. putting. Oh, what an effort. Fun it out. Well, Greg Norman's won the golf tournament. You like to see people win. But on the other hand, Paul is going to go home and think about making bogey from the edge of the 18th. Definitely. Steve Melvick with Greg Norman. 19 holes of golf, 12 under par. Greg, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I mean, it was just uh, I had a beautiful four in there. And Bruce said, come on, chip it in. Yeah, You'll do it. so. I chipped it in. I guess that's what I thought. Did you get the feeling that maybe in the playoffs this was your day after the 62? Uh, well, you know, somebody said that. Uh, I think Vaughn said it out of uh, PJ Tour guy. He said, yeah, wouldn't it be a shame if you shoot 62 and not get in the playoffs? So I said, well, I'm just happy to be here. And, you know, you just got to keep working at it. That's all you got to do. $252,000 to boot to go with it. I think I could find a way ahead of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Greg. Congratulations, Pat. His eighth tour championship. As you look at Greg Norman, chip it in for the win. For our CBS Sports Announce crew, then, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from the Doral Country Club in Miami, Florida. What a finish.